Hey, hey, good morning. Welcome to another fail forward session. Session number, I want to say three. We had to take a little break from this series um, for a couple weeks while I went to do an event. And I'm back. And I'm excited to get back in here. I'm excited to get back to strength training. It's always, it's always a great feeling. New beginnings are such a great feeling, right? And that's how I'm feeling right now is just that there is, um, my fan is making a lot of noise. It's like the, the start of a new beginning and sometimes new beginnings, starting with, uh, we're going to start with some gentle twists to get started on our warm up. Sometimes new beginnings are, you know, kind of made for us, whether it's a Monday, whether it's, you know, January 1st, whether it's the start of a new month, right? And other times new beginnings come from, you know, like the song says, some other beginnings end. So you finish up a project, you finish up a training cycle, you finish up. Okay, we're going into March's next. You, you, you complete something, and so you're, you know, you have a new beginning in front of you, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. And the other thing I would encourage you to think about is, I counted yesterday, I think it was 97 days left of 2023, so I'm gonna think that it's 96 days, if I counted those correctly, left of the year. And to think about this for a second, I saw, saw this on someone else's social media, Go all in for the rest of 2023. Like, regardless how 2023 has gone for you up to this point, you know, we all, I shouldn't say we all, but many of us start really fired up and excited and optimistic, full of hope on January 1st, right? We have big dreams, big goals. And I really believe with any big goal or any beginning like that where you have, you're full of hope and full of optimism, you have a fresh slate, a fresh path in front of you to, you know, a new beginning, so to speak, right? You're, you're recreating, you're writing a new story. And the middle, I, somebody that I know calls it the messy middle, the middle gets us every time. It doesn't matter what it is, right? It's the middle that gets really messy. And some of us don't make it past the middle. And honestly, that's, that's okay, that's to be expected. But um, if, if you can forge through the middle, you get that hope again as you, as you close in on the finish, right? So I'm just thinking of, like, let's say you're following a four-week plan or an eight-week plan, right? The first, first couple sessions are super exciting because they're new. You're full of hope and optimism. And then, you know, you start to get sore, you start to get tired, and inevitably there's a moment of doubt that arises in that messy middle where you think, I don't know if I can do this. Things aren't unfolding the way I expected or I thought they would. Um, I don't know if this is for me. I and, and sometimes we adjust our goals, sometimes we just quit altogether. But I encourage you with anything that you're working on in your life right now, like regardless of what the goal is, to hang in there for that messy middle and be patient and let let your, don't adjust the goal. Don't adjust the goal. Maybe adjust the path. Maybe adjust the approach. But don't adjust the goal. Keep going, right? And if you can forge through that messy middle, you will often surprise yourself. You'll end up at the finish, and there you are at a new beginning again. Um, anyways, I completely lost track of what I was going to So we're finishing up the first round of warm-up, which is low, no impact. We're going to add a hop in a moment. If you're new, if this is a beginning for you, you may want to keep it at low impact like this. So you just take the hop out of anything that I'm doing in the next two rounds and keep it at low no impact. Um, and again, like to talk about, you know, the messy middle with the doubts where you think I can't do this. Um, I need to adjust my goals. I need to downsize my dreams. Um, no, 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 hang in there because when you can forge through that messy middle and come out on the other side, there's often a quantum leap that happens, which is a surge of success, a surge of results, 
but we usually quit right before that happens. <laughs> because the surge of results, or the surge of success, will follow the biggest feeling of doubt, right? Like when you're feeling most like you wanna quit, you have to have faith inside to know that you're on the verge of a breakthrough, right? And what many of us never experience that breakthrough because we listen to those feelings and thoughts of doubt. So anyway, um, back to what I was saying, I feel like there's a new beginning in front of us. Oh, and I was talking about the 96 days left of 2023. Go all in, forget what's happened up until this point. If it's been, like you're through the messy middle of the year of 2023, and you're approaching, uh, what were we doing? <laughs> we're going to grapevines next. You are approaching, so you're, the year is like this. We start out, ho, 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 big dreams. Sorry, it's more like this. <laughs> you know, we get into the messy part, and then we're now kind of approaching the end. So where do you want to be for January 1st? Do you want to be in the same spot, or worse, maybe behind, you know, where you were on January 1st of 2023? Or what if you, if you could go all in on your goals from now, 96 days till the end of the year, you can crush this year and you can finish 2023 feeling like, you know, on a high, which is gonna fuel your goals for 2024. So my, I feel like it's a little, little bit of a fresh beginning for me, um, kind of to step back and reassess, okay, where am I at now? Where do I want to be January 1st for 2024? And what what do I want to work on? Because I got 96 days left of this year, I think. I don't know. I didn't fully count them. Um, that might, might not be including today. So maybe it's 97. Anyway, 100-ish, right? Give or take that you can go all in on your goals. So that's what I encourage you to do right now as we finish off September, right? A few more days of September. Get some thought as to what your goals were January 1st of 2023 and where you'd like to be on December 31st, 2023, knowing that you have October, November, some three full months to work on being where you want to be. The year is not over. It is so far from over. We have 25% of it left. Right? So, um, so I'm excited to be back in here working on my strength, working on um, my mobility, and working on my vitality, I'm going to call it. I was going to call it health and well-being, but I don't want to be healthy and well. I want to be vital. Like, I want, I want to age backwards. <laughs> Right, and I believe now, after my um, event that I did a couple weeks ago, I believe more than ever, two keys to us feeling possibly even better than we did in our 20s and 30s, ladies, is strength training and mobility. And diet, of course, is the king of all of it. Um, but we're working out in here, so our focus is strength overall body strength, bone health, right? Um, the health of our tissues, right? Our, the health, our health at a cellular level, that does start with diet. And if you need help with diet, which honestly you can do anything you want in here, you can do all the mobility, all the strength training you want. If your diet is not fueling your body with the right, the right things, <laughs> Right, giving your body the right tools to not just get strong, but also to recover, to heal. Um, you know, that is the biggest, I really do believe that is the biggest piece. I've learned a lot this year about the impact that what I eat has on my, you know, my inflammation, my sleep, my energy, you know, which it's not, I say this kind of tongue in cheek because I eat pretty well before. But now it's like, I have this sort of mentality when it comes to 
food and, and anything that I'm ingesting, but it needs to serve a purpose for me. It needs to be doing something good for me. I don't want to put stuff in my body <laughs> that's literally trashing it, right? And it's not about being perfect, but you know, there's ways of having indulgences without trashing your body. Um, I started, you guys know, I started a new column in my Pursuing Wellness group on Facebook. If you're not in that group, go join it. Um, I started a new column called Treats Thursdays because there's, you know, there's this saying in uh, the world that I really don't like. It's called everything in moderation. It's a pet peeve saying of mine for many reasons, and I won't get into those right now, but we're gonna do, we're gonna do Tabata today. I was debating. But it's my, I did work out a little bit yesterday. It was my first workout back just to move my body a little bit, but I'm still, I'm still trying to keep it a little easy this week on account of my body still healing probably more at a cellular level. It's a lot harder than I thought it was in here. Okay, so we're gonna start with um, squats. So we're gonna do suitcase squats and we're gonna do lateral squats. Now this is what lateral squats are gonna look like. We're gonna step back and forth. These are so good for mobility. Now if you're new-ish, you're gonna do them just like I'm doing them right now. Some of you may find this hurts your knees. We wanna get kind of deep into this squat. If that's difficult for you, you can modify this to just a side squat like this. Okay, and then suitcase squats are Again, if you're new, you're not going to use any weights. I'm going to go kind of light today, but we're going to do a, a regular squat using two weights if you're using weights, aka suitcase. Um, if you are, are new or you're, you know, just getting back into things, feel free to not use any weights. Okay. Um, alcohol was something that I cut out in January. January 8th, I had, December 31st was my unofficial last drink, but I did have two glasses of wine on my birthday on January 8th, so I have to move my start date <laughs> to January 9th, I guess, was my official first date, my unofficial, I guess my, from the 31st to the 9th was just a warm up for me. Okay, you guys ready? We're starting in three, three two, one, going. Um, I have not had alcohol. I finished my race and I was handed a very special beer. I was actually really tempted to drink it. I did not. Um, I also had a bit of temptation after my race. I was watching. I, Renelle and I spent the day. Okay, so I'm going to do these first ones with no weight because I want to make sure my form is good. I want to make sure I'm getting deep. These are, these are gonna, okay, so we're, you can put your hands back because we want to avoid bending and make sure you're squatting. So you're squatting your hips down low. So good for mobility. And again, if mobility is an issue, which it's not something that many of us do well unless we work at it because we sit so much. And as we sit and as we age, and as we sit and age together, <laughs> it's kind of a recipe for, you know, disaster, so to speak. In other words, like low back pain, hip pain, sciatic pain, you know, neck and shoulder pain, all kinds of things that don't, you know, they don't serve our body well. If we sit all the time, we don't do anything to kind of undo that damage. Um, and so if you're new, your mobility, your range of motion might not be great, but the good news is, the best news is, the body is so adaptable, and you just doing a little bit daily can change that, and literally almost give yourself like a brand new body. <laughs> I mean, and that's, that's how I feel <laughs> from just doing the mobility that I've been doing the last few months. It's like, it's like I got a brand new body. Now that again, like was coupled with some pretty drastic diet changes. So I cut out alcohol. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you have to cut out alcohol, but I am saying that 
there's a price, and it doesn't matter how little you drink, right? In fact, I would encourage you, if you don't drink very much, why not just not drink at all? Like, why bother in the first place, right? It's like, it's, it, it really is the modern day smoking. And if you think about it like that, like, would you have just the smoke, just because you're hanging out with your friends? You know, these are the things where I've, you know, I try to hold myself to a higher standard than doing things just because they're easy and in front of me, you know, when the cost is so high, right? So having an occasional beer, an occasional glass of wine, no, they're not gonna hurt you necessarily, but they're not doing anything good for you. And, and so that's kind of my attitude towards any, you know, junk food. Now, granted, I had, <laughs> I had some Chick-fil-A on the weekend which was one of my, I had a short list of things that I was going to allow myself to have after my race as a treat within a certain window. <laughs> and so um, I, had, I had the Chick-fil-A. I gotta say, I was so disappointed because it just did not taste like I was expecting. Um, last time I had it was after my last race and it tasted like just so amazing. And this time, I think I waited too long, like, you know, the initial days after doing a huge effort, like what I had done, everything tastes so good. Uh, I think it was past that point. What else did I have? I had some rolled ice cream that was on my list. It was, it was good, but oh, that's it. That is it. Okay, that's what I'm gonna see, I'm talking so much. The time is just flying by. Okay, that's around. So next up, we're gonna go to lunges. Um, so we're gonna do forward stepping lunges, and we're doing one leg at a time. Okay, so you can do these with or without weights. If you're new, don't do, you don't use weights. If you're you've been doing this, you're seasoned, you're conditioned, you can use weights. I'm going to use light. A lightweight. Um, anyway, yeah, like pretty much, I've conditioned my body, probably through my mind initially, but to really not enjoy, you know, really processed kind of junky food. Um, I just as soon have something like my, my idea of what a treat or an indulgence is has completely changed, you know, and I've realized that, honestly, like, it's funny because I, um, I click on recipes. Well, because you click on one recipe, you're gonna get sent a whole bunch of recipes, you know, that are comparable. So the recipes that come to me in my feed, in my Facebook feed are Health, healthy kind of twists on things. It makes you realize, like, there's a healthy twist on everything. And when you change your taste buds, um, and actually, I remember learning from my company, your actual microbiome will adopt, adapt to how you eat. You change your microbiome, you change your taste buds to enjoy, I'm not saying like, I'm not talking like, enjoy kale as a treat. I'm talking about, you know, I posted a, a recipe for peanut butter cookies that were not full of, you know, shortening and butter and sugar and flour. You know, they were just, I think, three or four simple ingredients. Um, there's still an indulgence in the sense that if you're following a food plan with a specific goal in mind, like if you're trying to lose weight or lean up, um, food has to be manipulated to your goals. That's the way, you can't just eat anything and eat, eat anything in moderation if, if your goal is important to you, right? You have to eat <laughs> to serve, like it's like if you're making cookies, you can't just put like, you know, I don't know tomato sauce in <laughs> because everything in moderation like you have to put the ingredients in that are going to provide the the outcome that you want it's the same food so the 
traits I'm talking about having are not providing the outcome I want, but they're also not doing damage. So I hope that kind of makes sense because there's a big difference. Um, you know, there's some muffins that I really like from the Run Fast and Slow books. Um, just made a huge batch. I'm making some more today, some lemon blueberry chia muffins. They honestly taste like dessert. Like, and that's the thing. Do I need to go to Starbucks and get a muffin that's a cupcake? You know, called a muffin? Or can I make my own? Yeah, I can make my own. Enjoy them. And at least be staying on the right track with health and wellness. Right? Because I'm not putting crap in it. I hope that's making some sort of sense. So, now, I look back to pictures early in, early in the year where I was following best me. I followed the best me, um, me, like, eating plan diligently from January to, I would say, April, maybe May, May, for five, five months. And I look back at those pictures. I loved the way I looked. <laughs> and I loved the way I felt. I felt great too. I didn't look good on, you know, I didn't look good at the cost of feeling good. I, I looked, I like how I looked and I love how I felt. And I love how my workouts and runs were going. So I didn't do it one more. Nope, that's it. Um, anyway, I, I liked. I stopped doing the best me because of my training. I'm so itchy today. Because of my training um, for a long distance, and I knew I needed to put on some weight. It was too lean. When you do these huge long distance events, like I took on this year, um, a, a 200 and a 100, the 100 was in the mountains, like you need. You need some, some sustenance on your body, <laughs> essentially. So, all right. So our next one is going to be, I've been actually so looking forward to these. We're going to do our 747s. Um, so I, I put on a little bit, and it's true. Like, it came off during my 200. After my 200, I dropped down. Like, my body felt, like, emaciating it. But don't worry, I've been eating <laughs> I've been eating a ton to make up for that. So don't use a weight if you're new. The other thing is if you're new, you might want to have your hand close to a full wall. Okay? And you're going to hinge forward. This is a hinging movement. So you want to hinge from the hips, keeping the back and straight and the chest up, and then lifting that back leg in conjunction with your torso. So you're gonna change sides with the weight if you're using a weight. Sometimes a weight actually makes these feel a little bit more balanced. But if you're new, you wanna kind of focus on getting that good form down first. And these are gonna really target your, your glutes. I'm happy to report that my legs held up for the entire 200. Um, my legs felt great. What I struggled with towards the end was my feet, which, funny, they actually held up uh, my feet. They just felt like, they felt like they were like chopped suey at the end, shoved in my shoes. Um, I sweat my mind couldn't stop focusing on was how mashed up my feet felt. They felt like just like they were blistered all over. They felt awful. And when I got to the finish, I could not wait to get those shoes off and socks off. And whoo, there's a bit of a balance component to these too. And uh, lo and behold, my feet were totally fine. Um, I had one blister. One blister. I had a couple other 
I would say pre-blisters, like they were blisters in the making, but they, so they were more like hot spots. They were really pain, like painful, like pain is relative, I suppose. It's hard to ignore your feet because you feel, you feel it with every step, like you can't, but I did get, I did get a number of hours of relief when I changed my shoes, which was, you know, the 80K of, um, running that I did, the 80K high before I hit, before I came crashing down for my 47K low. <laughs> oh, lost my balance there again. Oh man, I love the feel of these. Gonna feel those tomorrow. The one thing I always like to think of if you're doing these classes and you know you're just we're we're unsure, right? Like we're like, do I do cardio, do I do strength training, do I do hit training? Like what do I do for optimal health? And here's how I look at it, like cardio, running, spe specifically running. I mean, you can swim, you can do the elliptical, you could um, ride a bike. Those aren't going to break your body down the way running does. Running breaks your body down. There's no two ways about it. Like running is great for fitness, great for your heart health. I would also argue great for your mental health but really does break your body down, which is why in a long distance, like 200 mile event, 100 mile event, I try to get away with as much hiking as I can because running is going to exacerbate problems. Um, okay, I'm only, you know what, I need to use my bench because we're gonna do, I'm gonna do Copenhagen's because I also something I've been looking forward to wrong with me, right? Um, so I'm just going to pull my bench. So you can use a step. You can use stairs. Just any, you can use a chair, you can use a table. Anything that's just elevated um, that will allow you to raise one leg. Ow! Oh! oh I hurt myself. <laughs> yeah, that hurt. Um, sometimes it's forget how short my legs are. Um, if you're new, what I'm going to encourage you to do is side plank because Copenhagen's are an advanced move and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do that side plank. The other things I need, I need a mat for these for my elbows. Um, side plank option number one is just on your knees and then number two is stacked feet. And then if you're advanced and you're ready for it, you're gonna do Copenhagen's with me. Work up to these. These are not a beginner move. Full disclosure, that's why I give you options. So if you're a beginner, these are not for you. <laughs> but these are for you to work towards. Okay, and then we're gonna turn over to the other side. To that, of course, we do eight, eight rounds of everything. So we stack. Usually two exercises we rotate between, which means we do four of each. So this is how I break down in my head. This is, remember, the completion of round one of four. So what I do as an ultra runner is I have all these mind games, math games, <laughs> games of how to break things down. Guys, it's a great skill to develop in life it's how to break things down. What's that saying? How do you eat a whole pizza one bite at a time? <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the saying, but you get what, I, what I'm talking about. How do you accomplish a big goal? Just one day, one step at a time. You don't have to achieve everything in one day, and you're not going to achieve everything in one day. The only way to not achieve it is to quit. 
right? And the only way to achieve it is to just keep showing up. I had this talk with my son recently. As he's in the messy middle of a big goal that he's working towards. And if we were to assess the goal by the physical evidence, meaning what's occurring around us in real time, which is what we do, right? We give way too much stock to what's happening around us in real time. What's happening around you in real time is the past, right? This is what you've created from what you've already done. Now, if you are happy with the results in real time, by all means, continue to do what you've been doing. But if you're, if you're assessing your results or assessing your success, whoo, by real time results, you're living in the past. And it's so easy to feel defeated by that because it, it appears, it would appear to you that the goal is not coming to fruition. And what happens when we lose hope or lose, no, just lose hope, stop there. What happens when we lose hope is we give up and that is why the goal didn't happen, not because the goal couldn't happen for us, right? So I had this talk with my son and I said that what you have to do in times like this is you have to have faith and you have to have faith in the fact that everything happens for a reason. And usually the route, the road to your goal is not going to look <laughs> like what you think. There's going to be some bumps, there's going to be some detours. Your job is to listen to the side, or, or take your cues. Your goal is to not adjust the goal. Your goal is to, your, your, your job is to adjust the plan getting to the goal, not the goal itself. Sometimes I like to think of these times, the, the messy middle, um, as the universe just wanting to know, do you really, like, do you really want this goal? Do you really mean it? <laughs> right? Like, how badly do you want it? Because the universe wants you to have what you want, but, you know, sometimes I think, it wants to make sure that you really want what you're saying you want. Does that make sense? So the next one we're going to do, we're doing a whole bunch of legs today, is we're going to do, um, what are they called? The, these guys, my other least favorite. Um, I might actually do those with no weights today. My legs are going to be so sore tomorrow, I can already feel it. For those of you who are new, I want to share something with you. <clears throat> I shared this with all my clients after my last race. I work out all of the, I work out three to five times a week in here. I'm in here doing strength training, right? At minimum three, maximum five, often four, right? I took, I didn't even take the week off before my race this time. I took the week of my race off and the week after my race off. So maybe two to two and a half weeks off, okay? So what I'm saying is two and a half weeks ago, I worked out. I was in here consistently working out. In just two and a half weeks, <laughs> my body is going to feel like it's never worked out before, right? So the reason I share this with you is because if you haven't worked out in 10 years, or ever, or in a month, or in six months, whatever, it doesn't really matter because we, again, talk about that physical evidence, we will be sore and we will attach the story that we want to it, right? So the story I'm gonna attach is, well, it's my first workout back, my second will be better, my third will be better, and then I'll be back to where I was at. That's my story. Your story that you're gonna attach through your, um, where you're at today is, is shame, right, is, um, you're gonna berate yourself potentially, right? For letting yourself get, don't, don't attach anything to it. You're gonna be sore the first workout, right? Probably more sore than you think, and maybe even sore enough that it alarms you a little bit. 
Just keep coming back. Just keep coming back. Keep your eyes on that goal that you set before you started. And just keep showing up. I said to a client the other day, she said, I hope you can motivate me. Kick my butt and motivate me. Um, no, and give me some of your mojo. I said, if you show up, I will give you all the mojo. But I can't show up for you. You have to show up. You have to get here. Once you get here, I can tell you all of the things, right? But if you can't show up, I can't help you. I can't want it for you, right? But if I did want it for you, there's a few things I would want for you. I would want you to believe in yourself, and I would want you to have faith in knowing that you can feel completely different than you feel right now, um, and that you have full control over what that looks like for you. No matter where you're at today, you have more power and control than you think in terms of your results and how you live your life. Um, I would want you to have energy and vitality to live a life full of, you know, for me, adventure, um, accomplishment, um, inspiration, right? I want that for you. That might not look different for you than it does for me. You might be winning a golf tournament like Betty did this year. I don't want to win a golf tournament, <laughs> but I want to run 200 miles. Um, well, right? But most of all, day to day, I want to feel really good. I want to feel clear headed. I want to feel energetic. I want to feel that hope and optimism and inspiration, right? It's all about hope, you guys. It's all hinges on hope. Because hope will cause us to still take action, but when we are hopeless, when we have no hope, we, we've, we, we're doomed. We're really doomed. So define what gives you hope. For me, I always look at people doing more than me, and I think, well, if they can do that, I can do this. Or if they can do that, I can do that too sometimes, right? I look for people doing what I want to be doing so that I know it's possible versus people not doing anything. Is that it? Do we have one more? No, I think that's it. Whew, all right. We are going to finish with... one is simply a basic loop bridge okay option two is single legs and we're going to alternate and option three is to use that bench so I think I have an idea I'm going to do one of each so that's what I'm going to do we're going to start on the ground regular loop bridges so what these are going to do is activate your, your butt muscles, which is a, a big problem for a lot of us, is our butt muscles are not activated and they're not working, in which case our hips and our lower back are doing all kinds of jobs that they're not supposed to. The other thing is, for a lot of us, is core. Our core is not, our core is weak and un, unused. And so other areas of our body do the work. Sometimes it's the hip flexors. Sometimes it's the, the lower back is doing the work for our, our weak core. And again, I would encourage you just do a little bit every day. That's what our daily move challenges are for, is to encourage you to do just a little something every single day. Trust me when I say that adds up. And, and if you don't trust me <laughs> when I say that, read the book, The Slight Edge. One of the best books I've ever read. Or Atomic Habits. Really illustrates the power of small things 
done daily. And that power goes both ways, let me tell you. That power will move you forward or backwards. One glass of wine every day is not harmless, and it's not moderation. But it's just one glass, right? One cookie every day after lunch is not harmless. Does that mean you can never have a glass of wine and never have a cookie? No. No, it doesn't. But if you're having it every day, even if it's just a little bit, it compounds. It's like just compound interest. That's all you gotta remember. What am I doing consistently that would work with the compound interest rule, <laughs> right? And it goes both ways, but we dismiss, we really dismiss the power and, it, and the, like the, yeah, the power of the little things that we do or don't do. We think they don't matter. We think, oh, what's a 30 second plank every, gonna, every day gonna do? Nothing. What's a 10 minute walk gonna do? Nothing. Not true, right? What's one cookie gonna do? Nothing. One glass of wine, nothing. One extra tablespoon of cream in my coffee, right? The thing is it's compounded over time. Okay, up again. I'm not gonna go to walk tomorrow. I was gonna try my first run, run tomorrow. I'm going for a walk after this. I'm ready to run, I think, but I, I think I might wait one more week. Oh, again, and, the, and back to what I was saying, like running breaks your body down and strength training builds your body up. So I think what I'm gonna do is spend the week building my body back up with strength training and mobility. Because I think I'm gonna do a series that I'm gonna post on this YouTube channel. I wanna do 10 minute workouts and 10 minute uh, mobility, maybe even shorter, maybe five minute mobility sessions. So I really believe, imagine that, that's 15 minutes. Could you find 15 minutes on, in a busy schedule to do a short workout and a mobility session? One of the projects that's been on my mind, all these projects that have been on my mind that now that I'm not training, I'm, it's my off season. <laughs> What am I gonna do? I rebuild my body back up. Be strong, mobile, healthy for whatever goal I set for 2024, which I haven't decided yet. And that is it for today. Thank you guys for joining me. So great to be back. I will see you all tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Thanks again.